What's up guys? Welcome back to the Home Slice. Today I have a really interesting edge to introduce you to. So I was reading an article in the Science of Sharp. I'll put the link sort of URL up here, but I'll also put it in the description of the video. I'd really highly encourage you to go and read this article. Now Todd Simpson talks about some of the discoveries that he's made surrounding carbides. And there's some really surprising things, like in his research he's found that often the carbides that are in steel, which are on the surface of the metal, they often or almost always will get cracked by diamond abrasive. I'm, I'm not sure about diamond and strops, but it seems that the examples that he gives where he's sharpening with diamond plates or lapping film with diamonds, there's oftentimes these cracks through the carbides and, and the hardness of the diamonds actually causes the carbides on the surface of the steel to shatter or when it bends the burr over, the burr is so large and aggressive that it shatters some of the carbides that are inside of the burr. And he demonstrates in that article that even with Maximet and K390, which have large amounts of tungsten and vanadium in them, you can sometimes sharpen with a more traditional stone to form the apex, and then he removes just a little bit of metal. I'll put a picture up right here using a uh, sort of a softer stone. And one of the examples he uses, uh, Arkansas translucent stone. And in another example, he uses a Japanese natural stone, but he works up a slurry that has a lot of that silicon carbide in it, and then just gently pulls the edge through the slurry to sort of wear away around the carbides, but leave them in place. And it leaves this edge with carbides that are sticking up and protruding. And I've been doing some different things to, to see whether I can try to mimic this edge because I think that it would really be worthwhile and valuable to test whether carbides that are damaged in the very surface of the metal have some kind of an effect versus whether you can leave exposed carbides sticking out of the metal. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that I've created Todd Simpson's Edge. I'm using really, really limited materials right now. But it is interesting that I've got this style of Edge, doing it this way, under 100 best several times now. Got it in anywhere from the range from 59 is the lowest that I've got it to 99, which is on this one. Unfortunately, like my nerves sort of affect me when I'm filming a sharpening session. And this is actually the worst <laughs> of the three or four times that I have sharpened to this edge. But anyway, we're gonna do a rope of death test. And beyond that, I would really love other sharpeners in the community, if you see this video and you look at this article and you have some ideas of how you could sharpen to achieve this kind of an edge, or even if you have similar stones to the ones that I used and you just wanna try forming this specific edge, not necessarily the one that's in the article. I would love to get some feedback. I cannot decide what I think about this edge. <laughs> I've got it down to 59 best before, and it, it seems very keen. It seems to have kind of medium aggressiveness, and it seems to last a decent amount of time, but I would really love to hear some input from other people in the community with trying to replicate this effect and to maybe draw some conclusions. I'd really like some help in that. But anyway, for today, we're going to try doing a rope cut test with this style of edge. And we'll do a best measurement after and we'll just see if it can get through the death rope. <laughs>
<clears throat> just like a verbal update. I <clears throat> we've got through just under half of the rope. It's definitely slowing down, but the edge seems like if you press down, it doesn't make that squeaking noise. It sounds like it's still severing fibers, but we're just going rather slowly. I sort of suspect that this is like a really durable style of edge, but perhaps not the most, most aggressive. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll keep going until I can see that it's no longer severing new fibers when I move to a new piece of rope and we'll see how far we get. I don't, I don't think we're going to get through the whole thing, but there can be miracles when you believe. Okay, I think we're going to call it there. So, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, just about buried the blade. Get this. Just about buried the blade, so probably got through about that much rope. Um, you can see it's like... It's not quite... It's not quite halfway. It's maybe a third of the way through the rope. So definitely the furthest, actually, that a freshly sharpened edge has got through the death rope. I've got to come back soon and retest M4 with a fresh dual grit edge. I'm wondering if actually a fresh edge and how keen that is, is actually a disadvantage for trying to get through this rope. And maybe the way that it was worn down to like a bit of a thicker surface that still had some aggressive roughness of texture actually helped perhaps get through the death rope where maybe a freshly sharpened edge is too fine and too small and it just chips away. But anyway, I would love to see you guys try sharpening this way and I would love to hear your thoughts. I'm having a hard time making up my mind on what I think about this and I would love some input from the community. Oh, I almost forgot to do the best test. So let's get that and see where this M4 with an attempted um, unbroken carbides exposed kind of style edge. Let's see how dull it got. It went a lot longer than the other blades. So even if it was over a kilo, I would not be disappointed because it kept cutting for about eight times as long as the other blades did. Four hundred and sixty-two. Four hundred and sixty-two. Dang. Four hundred and sixty-two is not bad. I should get a piece of paper. Just a second. All right. Let's see how it does on a piece of paper. Yeah. So, out of the tip, she's still cutting paper well. Uh, well, still cutting paper decently. Down at the heel, we're still getting through paper. In the middle, no. So there's an, an identifiable dead spot. Although that skipped around, but it kept cutting. So, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, let me flip it around. Yeah, so there there is a dead spot in that part that was the main contact point against the rope, like kind of from, from there to there, there is a dead spot. This portion of the edge is still cutting and this portion of the edge is still cutting. So very interesting results. Yeah, dead spot right there. Okay, well, peace out from the home slice. Take care, guys.